Everyone, welcome back to Dave's Small Engines. Uh, what do we have here? Looks like a steel FS45 trimmer uh, that I just picked up with a bag of parts. Uh, it's a bit of a mess here, so I'm gonna take everything apart, lay out all the parts and make sure there's everything in order to put it back together and then uh, we'll see if we can get it running. As always, one of the first things I like to do is to make sure that there's no scoring on the piston walls. Um, and in fact, this one actually looks like it's in fantastic shape with low use. You can actually still see the, uh, the grooves from the factory on the side of the piston. Um, this indicates to me that it uh, hasn't been used a heck of a lot and that we shouldn't have any issues with compression. Another video on this titled, Is It Worth Saving This Trimmer? Um, and I go into more in depth as to what I'm looking for um, to determine whether or not it's a fixable unit. All right, so far so good. It looks like we have all the parts we need here. We have the recoil assembly, a uh, bag of bolts and a spark plug, carburetor, air filter box, cover element, um, the hardware for the case back here, uh, fuel tank and muffler. Now, one thing I'm gonna check with this muffler and I'll show you how to do that is to pop this um, spark arrestor out to see if it's clogged because that can often cause issues um, with running. So I'm going to guess because all this is a part that the issue is right here in the carburetor. Uh, I actually have a used carburetor that I'm going to put on that I know is in good condition and uh, we'll see if uh, that solves the problem. Interesting. So as I went to undo this with a 15 mil socket, um, I actually noticed that it was loose. So someone has already done this to check and it is kind of probably hard to see in the video, but it is, yeah, there you can see some light. It is see-through, which indicates that it's not clogged and that it's probably not the issue with this trimmer. So in my experience, uh, it's probably carburetor related and I'll pop a new carburetor on, put it all back together and uh, we should be off to the races. All right, so I've actually decided just to take this carburetor apart. Um, let's see if I can show this to you here. Uh, the diaphragm is very brittle and that's going to be the reason why it probably didn't run all that well. So, and this, uh, the pump diaphragm is also laminated. Um, so I just, I take a can of brake clean. I spray out all the important ports in here, which I can do a video on uh, at a later date. And I'll put a new carburetor kit back into it and uh, we'll see if it works. All right, so here's an aftermarket carburetor repair kit. Um, it has everything you need in it to rebuild a carburetor. Um, if you're looking for replacement carburetor kits, every carburetor is different. Or I should say there's a whole bunch of different carburetors. So you got to make sure that you order the right repair kit for your carburetor. When this kit is basically everything you need, um, your pump diaphragm, pump diaphragm gasket, metering diaphragm gasket, metering diaphragm, and then the uh, metering lever, uh, the pivot, the needle, and the spring and a screen. Um, I don't often usually get into um, removing these plugs. Um, because I find with a good carburetor clean, um, I can solve the problem that's uh, within the carburetor. Step one complete here, and that is to install the metering lever, the pivot, the needle, and uh, the spring underneath here. And as you can see, I'm having a tough time focusing, but when this metering lever is pushed down, it opens and closes the um, metering valve, allowing fuel in to the other side of the carburetor. So the next step here is to put the metering diaphragm gasket back on. And order is important here, the gasket goes on first. Um, what we're looking for is lining up this hole here with this port here on the carburetor because that is what draws the fuel in through the bottom of the carburetor. So metering diaphragm gasket, metering diaphragm, and then screw the purge assembly back on. All right, so I'm just finishing up screwing the purge assembly back on. I like to do a cross screwing or cross bolting pattern in order to ensure consistent pressure across the purge assembly as it's plastic. All right, making all the right noises. So the pump diaphragm, the pump diaphragm goes against the carburetor body first and then the gasket second. This is the opposite of the metering side where the gasket goes first and then the diaphragm goes second. Just to put the, um, the cover on. So 
this can be a bit tricky. I oftentimes have to bend um, or use or actuate the throttle flap in order to get the cover on without pressing against the idle control needle. So you can see it's pressing itself off there. So if you bend the throttle um, lever or if you use the throttle lever slightly, it prevents this problem from happening. Then all you have to do is screw it back on nice and snug. And last but not least is the um, needles and reassembly of the needles. Now, I like to take the high speed and the low speed needle out um, when I do a thorough clean because I like to spray um, solvent through these jets to make sure there's no um, blockages or plugging. So in this case, and always, the low speed needle is longer than the high speed needle. So I know that this here is the low speed and goes in the L hole, and this here is the high speed and goes in the hole marked H. So I put them as such, here's the L right here, and then H. So longer one in the low, and the way I remember that is L for long, also low. So I spin those in as such. And I like to do them snug and then back them out one and a quarter turns. That's usually the best starting point for me when I'm doing the fine tune adjustments on a string trimmer or other small engine. So snug, but not tight. You don't want to damage the needle. So that's snug there. And then I back it out one turn and a quarter. And the way I do that in order to make sure that uh, I'm consistent as I look at my nice Mastercraft screwdriver here and I back it out one whole turn and then a quarter. So a great way to test if your carburetor is or will be operational, at least for the uh, fuel priming system, is to hook up your, um, your carburetor to the fuel tank. Short line is your fuel intake, long line is your fuel return from the purge system. And then pump the bulb and see if it fills up with fuel. It starts to fill up with fuel, that means it is drawing fuel from the tank and return through the carburetor and then returning it into the tank, which is exactly what we want. So this is a carburetor that I am confident at least the fuel system works and I will give it a try on the trimmer. So the next piece of the puzzle is putting the muffler back on. Um, there's still a gasket around here on the cylinder head that lines up with this side here, so I don't need to put another gasket on. Um, pretty simple. Line it up, bolt it on. Always thread stuff in by hand first. That way you will know that it won't be cross-threaded um, because the last thing you want to do is have a cross-threaded bolt in your cylinder head because um, it will then be useless. As you can see here, I've removed the uh, shaft assembly, which actually easily just slides out of the clutch bell housing here. I find it much easier to maneuver and spin things around without the um, shaft attached. So the next step of the puzzle here is the uh, fuel tank assembly and the recoil assembly. All right, so we'll get the plug in here, get this lined up. Nice and snug, bring the fuel lines around here so they're out of the way. So now it's not bolted in. It's not, you know, able to hold there very easily by itself. But if you can kind of maneuver the recoil assembly into where it needs to go. There we are. Fits in like that. And then it's time to put in the three screws on the back. The first one I like to do is at the bottom. And I don't snug them up yet because I want to make sure all of them are in in case the plastic is tweaked. Come on, you. The third one is kind of tricky. It's uh, tucked in behind here. And I can snug them up. 
doesn't need to be overly tight. And we test to see that the recoil turns the engine over. And now we can put the carburetor on. Um, pretty easy to determine which way things go. Fuel intake and outlet lines right here, fuel lines on this side. And then everything just slides in. Attach your fuel lines, short to short, long to long. Short here, get you a better view there. Long to here. And I just like to make sure that I'm still able to pump fuel through. This is the air box assembly with these two small nuts right here. So you have the air box assembly fastened. It's time for the air filter element, which in this case, again, looks very clean. So I'm not quite sure how much use this car, this uh, trimmer had in its life, but I'm sure we'll find out. And the air box is complete. All right, the next part is the throttle cable bracket, which snaps in like this, and then goes into its pivot point right here behind the carburetor. Here's I've actually skipped a step. This throttle cable bracket needs to go on this pivot point here, but the carburetor is too close. So I'm gonna to have to back these two nuts off again, slide the assembly out in order to put this bracket on. All right, now that I've got it in place, I can tighten these nuts up again. Not overly tight, just nice and snug. All right, so then I hook up the throttle cable to the throttle. I'm ready to check for spark, which is incredibly hard to do with a shaky video camera. But I'll see if you guys can see this. Yeah, you can though. I gotta figure out a better video system. But as you saw there, a nice blue spark. That way I know the ignition system is intact. Um, and now it's time to just uh, button it all back up. So now it's time to slide the trimmer shaft assembly into place. It's a bit tricky on these um, consumer level implements because there's a lot of wiring and plastic going on right here. But what we're looking to do is line this square shaft up in here with the square trimmer shaft assembly. All right, so that's in as far as it's supposed to go. All that's left is the case assembly and the screws, which I have to access from the bottom. So the case goes on the top. And then we have to flip it over and screw in the screws in the bottom. front case at the top just kind of slides on. You can hear it click in nicely to where you want it to go. Just like so. Make sure the trigger still works and the lockout still works. And now it's just the screws from the bottom side. You'll notice here there's two different lengths of screws. This one is a little bit shorter than the other ones. These ones are the main body screws. But this smaller screw here actually goes in the center at the top and it aligns the shaft with the body or the power head assembly shot. So this is the where the shorter screw goes and it aligns the shaft with the power head. And there's actually a hole on the shaft inside in which this needs to go down into to lock it against the power head. Screws just go in here nice and easy. One that likes to hide at the back under the fuel tank. You can kind of see it right in there. There it is. So I just got to get this screw under there. It can be a bit tricky. So let's see if it starts. Ignition to on position. Throttle lever locked on. Choke on fully. Right here on this lever. Prime a few times and let's see what happens. Very promising. Kicked over just the way we like it. So choke off. So as you saw there, it runs, but the idle is really low. So I'm gonna bump the idle up and do a quick tune and adjustment uh, on this carburetor. So again, I lock the throttle. Bring the idle up. I start with the low speed needle, which is closest to the body of the trimmer. I'm listening for the idle to increase or decrease. So it's increasing slightly here. And it'll 
start to decrease. Now I need to back it out to where it's at its fastest. And where it's at its fastest, I just go a slightly bit further out as the RPM starts to drop. Right there. And that's where I leave it. Then I can adjust the idle needle. Bring the idle to where I want it. And what I'm looking for there is that the head doesn't spin. So I don't want the trigger head to be engaged. I want my idle nice and low. And then the next step is the high end. It's kind of tricky to get a hold of here. So the high speed needle, you have to rev it out so this might get a bit loud. And then I'm just listening for this sweet spot where it just starts to burble a bit before it's broken. I'll explain that further. is make sure the string is out as far as it's supposed to go because the further the string is out, the faster, um, the slower it will spin because there's more um, centrifugal force for the engine to deal with. So this string isn't quite out as far as it needs to go. So I will start it, bump the string out, and then we'll do the rest of the fine tuning. My idle's a bit low, I think. Now I can really tune the high speed needle. It's time to test it out. Ignition on. Should start easy. Nice idle. FS45 steel string trimmer. Um, I'm having a lot of fun putting these videos together and uh, putting out content for you. So if I've helped you out at all, or if you've liked my videos, do me a favor, like and subscribe. And uh, I guess stay tuned until the next video. Take care. Thanks again.